Whenever I run a workshop for um, specifically managers or gym operators, I do an exercise called boss versus leader. The point of the exercise is to decipher for the managers and the operators the, uh, that they are clear on the distinction between boss and leader. Um, I've had a lot of experience of working for bosses and also working for leaders. And uh, I think this image is, is one that I've been using for, for a couple of years now, which I feel best depicts the difference. If you have a look at the image right now, you've got the boss who's kind of sat on this kind of like sled-like thing, kind of pointing orders and telling the, the guys and slaves or whatever they are to kind of pull me in this direction, take me where I want to go. And then you've got the leader where the actual mission is being pulled along and the leader is at the front. For me, the key thing in terms of difference between boss and leader, a leader practices what they preach. Now, um, one of the best examples that I can tell you of, of a leader is my old boss, Dave Wright. Dave Wright is the CEO of Creative Fitness Marketing and the creator of MyZone, making movement measurable, I think is the right terminology that he would want me to use in this instance. But if I talk to you specifically about what made Dave a lead over a boss for a second. So Dave would never, first and foremost, Dave would never expect us to do anything that he wouldn't do himself. Uh, he, would, he would tour the way that we would. You know, if we were on the gym floor and we were busy and he came to do a visit, he would show someone around and he would do the sales process uh, in, in our place if we weren't able to do it. The best thing about Dave is he treated us better than we expected. I had an experience recently working with a gym, uh, with a group of gyms, and I experienced uh, some real kind of boss mentality. There was a real feeling within the culture that the staff were kind of told what to do, but maybe the, uh, the managers and the leaders within the business were not necessarily doing those actions themselves. Um, if you've ever seen the show Undercover Boss, this show really highlights the key differences between boss and leader. You know, if you've never seen this show, this is a show where a, uh, a leader of an organisation goes in back as an employee level to see what the culture of the business is like. And on a lot of occasions, what they see is not what they thought they would see. They see some pretty poor managerial uh, situations where people that they've entrusted to be leaders underneath them within the business are not sort of adopting the, uh, the, the ethics that they have wanted the business to be perceived for. They're not adhering to the mission of the business. So really short video today. This is where I just want you to take some time out this morning and just ask yourself the question, am I a boss or am I a leader? And if I think I'm a leader, why am I a leader? What am I doing to practice and then preach and not the other way around? And maybe if there are instances where you can think about that you've been a boss, maybe you've told a staff member to do something, something that you haven't yourself done and done for a while, maybe you need to think about why that is and what are maybe some of the fears or limiting beliefs or, or, or maybe what some changes that you need to make to enable you to be more of a leader. Here's the key thing, the key point I want to leave you with. If you want your staff to go above and beyond, you're going to have to be a leader. If you want your staff to go and visit 50 businesses today and come back with 40 leads and potential new members, you've got to be willing to do that with them. If you want your receptionist to pick up the phone and call 50 businesses in the next couple of hours and invite people down for a free trial, you've got to be willing to sit on the phone with them, next to them, and make calls as well. Practice then preach, not the other way around. I'm out.